Hello, acquaintances. Welcome back. Once again, the festive Halloween season is underway. Leaves fall, candy up for grabs, and best of all, millions of ghosts and creatures that haunt this earth finally are released. But they are all imitated, carried on by the millions of souls who celebrate its traditions. I myself follow this tradition. <laughs> all natural, as you can see. Not by my doing. Some of them are out, and like you, some are indoors. However you celebrate, you're letting me into it. For the tale today is one of an adult's worst fears. For them, while the creatures of the night roam the streets screaming, calling out for sweets, they are at home, like yourself, away from it. Are you an adult yet? If you are, or if you're not, here's a little lesson. Fear manifests everything. And sometimes your home is not as safe as you think. For today's story is called Baby Cot. Melanie saw the night approaching and went to close the curtains. It was the evening of Halloween and the kids were gearing up in their costumes. On her street, Melanie left a collection in a fresh jack-o'-lantern by her gate, signaling to parents to not disturb. Melanie was a young parent. She was on her own but she still had a roof over her head. Inside her house, though, was the bare minimum. No decorations, just the essentials. And nestled up in her arms was her darling little boy. Not even a year old, but still the sweetest thing her eyes feasted on every single day. She whispered, bedtime now. No monsters here tonight. The baby's cot sat round by her sofa bed. The TV's volume was quietened, and the two were ready for an early night. She laid her son down gently into his cot bed, and she snuggled up on the sofa. Not a bad time to crack open some wine, she thought. She got a glass and opened the bottle up in the kitchen and indulged in its dry but sweet taste. Three hours went by and it was 11 o'clock. Both Melanie and her son laid there asleep as the TV had turned off over an hour ago. The sounds of screaming children had vanished and only the howling of the wind rolled through the streets. It blew so hard that the branches on the bushes scraped the windows, one knocking it so hard it woke Melanie up. As she rose from her slumber, the wine glass was empty and still in her hand. She shot up thinking it wasn't giving her a little fright. It was dark inside, but she could still see the shape of her little one, cozied in without moving. Mel got up to the toilet, slowly pacing her steps up the creaky stairs. It all seemed fine as the street light shone through her bathroom. Even in the living room. Peaceful dark accompanying the little one's tiny little breaths. 
even when it was being picked up by something with long, bony fingers. Mel continued to rest her head on her hands as she waited to go. Her eyes were still heavy, and also her head was after the wine. That soon went away as a slight crack was heard back from the living room. Her motherly instincts kicked in, making her jump from the toilet seat and swung herself back downstairs to see where the sound had come from. Nothing. Just darkness in the room, and even in her baby's cot. Her eyes grew as she rushed over, gliding her hands all over to find him. Nothing. She panicked, calling out his name, and now reaching for the light switch, which did nothing to illuminate her search. She searched the floor, nothing. On the bed? Nowhere to be found. In the kitchen? Not a chance. She called out again with her voice breaking even more from the sure dread that her little one had been taken. That's when she heard the tapping on her door. A slow tap that sounded like a fingernail on glass. As she got closer, she saw a shape at the door and she heard trick or treat. She swung the door open to see who it was, but there was no one, just a branch which had been broken off from the tree. She peered outside to investigate, but then her head snapped back as she heard a baby's noise come back from inside. She slammed the door behind her as she went to the living room. She tried the light switch yet again, but to no avail. That's when she noticed when turning back, there was a candle lit. The orange glow with a pumpkin scent lit up in the corner of the living room. And unnerved her even more than it did relax her. Who's there? She asked. Whoever's here, give me back my baby and I'll give you what you want. Silence. Then came a dark voice that made even the wind outside stop. The wind rushed in, full pelt as the door smacked open. Mel turned to shut it once again, but as she got there, a dark, oversized, bony hand grabbed her back before her hands could grip the door handle. It yanked at her and sent her hurtling towards the wall. Her head hit hard, and she could feel blood trickling down. That's when the sounds of a baby were heard again, and also the little patter of tiny feet. Not just one, but many. They scuffled all around the furniture and then began being heard on the walls. Menly rubbed her eyes hard and saw them everywhere. The candlelight was bigger now and showed them all looking at her. Only they had no eyes and the crawling was of disfigured charcoal covered babies. A dozen of them roaming around her house, leaving their foot and handprints everywhere. She screamed as she saw the little abominations looking at her. They scurried away through the short hallway, leading up to the front door where it swung open once again. The wind blowing out the candle. And this time, she caught the sight of the figure in front. It stood out by her gate, walking slowly to the door. Its long, bony fingers held something all too familiar to Melanie. In its hands, as its hunched head twitched left and right, 
its knees were bent, and the babies were soon by its side. It was now looming in in the doorway. Its two fingers snapped, and a small flame rose from its long index finger. Melly didn't know what to do. She couldn't take her eyes off of it. Whatever this thing was, and the demonic children it had by its feet. It moved its abnormally long finger under its chin, merely catching a glimpse of its foul, yet sharp teeth. It was now near the very thing she had been looking for since she awoke. It lit her still sleeping child in the creature's other hand. That's when it yelled. Suddenly flames from its other fingers rose and then Melanie could see her baby in the full light. Its head was carved open at the top of it and it picked away at the baby's brain, feasting on its soft, chewy organs, spluttering out brain matter and bone. Melanie was just paralyzed at what she saw and screamed to the heavens. When she awoke with a horrible sensation in her head and stomach, the rest of the wine spilt out from her glass. The TV was still on, and it had only just turned ten o'clock. Her heart soon rested again as she saw her little boy on his back in the cot, awake and calling to her. She went over and cradled him tight, calming him. The horror she witnessed was not real. Yet she couldn't escape the fact that she felt like she could do nothing. In that moment, she felt weak in the nightmare and was scarred by it. That's why, at every Halloween night, Melanie leaves out two jack-o'-lanterns at her gate. One for the kids and one for anything looking to feast on something more than just candy. Creatures of the night pick and choose when to strike. Some choreograph their move precisely, on time and on schedule. Others just strike when they feel like it. As long as you're prepared, that's the main difference. It can determine the outcome, human or monster. Yeah. <laughs>